Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, I hope you've all had a good Christmas and if you've seen this after the new year, hope you're having a good new year as well. A couple of people at the Leyland meet I go to were asking how I uh, make new chassis rails for my trucks. So I just thought I'd come on here and make a video and show you all. So this is one that I've just done earlier. It took me about an hour to do. This is copying off a template from a Volvo FH16 750 Tamiya Wrecker. So all you need is the standard rail you want to copy. You can buy these Carson Blank rails from about a metre. They're about a metre long. You can buy them. And what you do is you basically make sure you have your... Cut them to the length you want. And then you'll have your left and right for your new and old rails. So the the left from the old rail is coming to the right of the new one, like that. So they're facing each other. So the C's are basically opposite, if you imagine it like that. And then same with the other ones. And then what you want to do is you get a centre punch like this here, and just go through, uh, go through every hole, and just pre-punch it so when your drill bit's um, spinning it will directly find the centre and then just draw, uh, go through because sometimes when you're drilling it will drill off centre and then you'll, your hole won't be exactly in line so you'll struggle with where your hole's going to be. So one thing I need to mention is these are the types of things you'll need so I recommend you have a set of calipers these are digital ones um, just to help you make sure you've got all the right drill bits because you've got a 3 mil drill bit, a 2.5 mil, and a 2 mil drill bit but then the 3 and the 2.5 are quite easy to get mixed up so I always like to double check with the calipers to make sure it's the right one I'm using like I said earlier, you'll need a centre punch or a centre pop as some people call it you'll need, I use a pillar drill so they're always handy because it makes sure you're drilling 90 degrees to the uh, to the workpiece, whereas if you're using like a handheld one, you can uh, drill off a bit. And then when you come in to tap, um, tap the holes, they'll be off. And then when you're trying to put screws in, it's an absolute nightmare. Another thing I'd recommend is just have two M3 nuts. Uh, yeah, sorry, M3 nuts and M3 bolts. That's just simple. So the way I do it is I'll drill a hole at this end and a hole at this end first and put those in so basically it locks the it locks the template onto the old one so that when you're drilling they won't move around as much and it's easier just to mark everything out properly another thing i'd recommend is a set square they're quite handy for when you're drilling these top ones here because you can get them in make sure they're always in line with everything so you just put it up like that Trying to do this one handed, but yeah, you put it up like there, make sure it's in the centre, and then just uh, use a scriber like this one here to just scribe your line on the aluminium rails, and then find the centre and then punch it with your centre punch to make sure it's all right. But what you have to be careful with is on some of these rails, the holes are off centre, so they're more towards the edge rather than the uh, inside. Another one to make sure is that the make sure you know which ones have got a thread inside because that's a mistake that you'll want to do, especially if you're using this rail after. So, another thing to I should point out to you is when you're drilling these sh new chassis rails for the any Tamiya Euro trucks, so the 770, the Actros, the A Rocks, the FH12, the R620 Scania, or the 7 or the 470 Scania is these four holes here and a couple these two are used for servo mounts so the servo mounts here and then you have a pillar here that brings your servo linkage from the top to the bottom of the chassis and when you drill these it i can't remember if it's upside down but i definitely know it's on the wrong side and that can affect how um your steering is but also tamia have designed some boxes for the links to go through so they'll also be on the wrong side and it, it doesn't quite really work. So the best way to do it is 
I always recommend to people when people are building trucks, lock your gearbox in either first or second gear. You don't need third. It's When you're trying to turn your truck into a race truck, maybe you do, but it's not necessary. So where your servo mount is for your gearbox, the best thing to do is mount the servo on the gearbox and I'll find a clip and add it in later. Oh, when I built the chassis, I'll show you. And put the servo where the gearbox is and then with the links you get in the kit, you can make it so it basically turns directly from the front of the truck onto the axle. So it removes a lot of the servo steering slot people have and it also just makes the truck steer a lot tighter. So it's much better. Right, so this is how I set mine up. Uh, I need to put a bit more wood under there to make them level, but I have a block of wood here with a clamp on the back. And then up here, I have me my three mil drill bit and I'm gonna drill the two holes here and here and I'll put a bolt in and I'll spin it round and I'll do the same on that side. And then I'm what I work through is I do all the three mils first, then all the 2.5s and then all the two mil holes. And then once I've done that, I'll tap all of them running down the middle and then I'll flip it on its edge because there are some holes here that need to be done on here. And there's some on the, on, on the bottom as well that need to be done. Um, so yeah, let's get going. So you can see that all right, I hope you can. So I've already used my centre punch and I've centre punched in the hole. So the drill bit, the point on the drill bit's got something to use as a guide to go in. What I like to do is I leave all this moving about uh, and I'll just hold it with my hand. I found that's the best way for me and I've just bought the camera. But all I do is I just do a couple of runs to make sure the drill bit will go in smoothly and I'll just put pressure on that so it doesn't move anywhere. So it's as easy as just turn on the drill. And then it's just as simple as that. You should have a uh, nice clean hole. If I can find the camera, there you go. Nice clean hole all the way through, nice and nice and level with the top and the bottom of the chassis rails. So all I'll do now is that is I'll just get the bolt from earlier that we had. I'll just post that through, and then on the other side, I'll just hold it in with a nut and keep it all keep it all in line, and then I'll switch to the other side. So now we've got those flipped around, uh, basically repeat the same process. But one thing I forgot to say is when you're drilling, this, the template can move up and down, which I don't want to happen because I want to reuse these chassis rails. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my finger on the top and use the rest of it to hold it in place. But I'll do the same again and just make sure it all fits, which it does. So it's just as simple as turn the drill on and then just slowly pull it down and slowly let it work its way through the metal. Don't force it. Just like that. And back that off. Just enough to get it out. So there again, you got another nice clean hole straight through the centre. And all I'm going to do is repeat the process again. I've just put a bolt through there and a hole with that. Put a nut on the end. Just to keep it all in place. And we don't have to worry about it jumping around the place. Use a screwdriver to put that on. Just do it nice and tight so it holds everything in place. So there you go, I've now got all them to do and I'll uh, come back to you once I've done all the furry mil holes. So what I like to do for the 2.5 mil holes is I'll hold it in place and I'll uh, move it down, but what I'll do whilst it's down, I'll spin it a bit. And if you listen carefully, you'll be able to hear if the um, the drill bit's catching on the thread that's already in the pre-built chassis rails. 
and if it is you just line it up slightly but if you catch it just a bit because there is a bit of paint on there all you do once you've um, drilled your hole is you'll just go through with the tap um, now this isn't really how you should use it you should have a handle on the top but I prefer it this way and all you do is just run it back through and it'll bite on the thread that's already on the black rail and then you'll just transfer it through onto the aluminium rail below so simple as just test it again make sure it's not moved can't hear anything so just make sure you're holding this even tighter now because you don't want to rip the thread off otherwise these chassis rails are basically done for so all you do again just turn it on And it's as simple as that it's a lot i do these, these ones a lot slower and a lot more carefully because like i say i'm using these chassis rails so i need them to be perfect but so this is i've done all the 2.5s now so this is now the, the two mil drill bit now the two mil drill bit has only got four holes i think well four holes depending on what you've got but there's definitely two at the back and all it's used for is when you've got your little shock cap, so when it's on your chassis rails, the uh, shock absorber basically sits in there like that. I've got two, but it sits in there like that and then just holds it onto the chassis rails. And all that hole is to do is it just holds that in place. But because, because they have to be at an angle and it's hard to get at one screw, never mind two, they've just put a little nipple on the back of there that uh, will... Uh, help keep it in place all you do is just drill straight through it doesn't need any threads in or anything it just needs to be big enough for that nipple to fit in so again same as how you've done it previously is just line that up with where it needs to be so there but remember i'm still doing all mine freehand just because i prefer it that way um it's there that's pretty I'll say that's pretty bang on, that is bang on. So all you do, again, just turn it off. And just like that, it's done. And now you've got the perfect size hole for the, uh, for the cap to, uh, for that little nipple there to fit into the chassis and sit flush. It's just one of the little things Tammy's added that you might need. Now, some chassis rails, or most of them, do have holes on the top and bottom. And the way I find easiest is to put them in the clamp, how they are. You can't even see. It's, it's that late, it's gone dark. So, put them into the like that. But, as I said before, I've scored a line, which is in line with the centre. And then I've measured the distance, and I've then centre punched each hole. So, I'll just do these two for you. And then I'll work on doing the refs. So again, simple as, as I've said, just line it up how you, um, well, line it up to where your centre punch hole mark is. So mine's about there. Then hold it in place again. Turn on the drill. And then it's as simple as that. Now, as I said earlier in the video, if you do want any chassis rails, the best place to get them from is a guy called Phil Oaks. He comes to my local meet and he is a he does sell them. He sells them for £25 a pair. You can collect from the meet or he will post them, but that will be an extra cost just due to the length and that they have to be in a tube so they don't get bent by the postman. But, no, thank you all for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful. Um, there will be a video soon with the um with these chassis rails being used on a chassis i can't say what the build is yet but i'll be able to show you what cab it is and possibly what might be happening with that one near the time but thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one